Well, hi, good morning, and thanks for joining me here in my shop on a very rainy September 13th. So, um, you know, if you're watching the video series, you know the uh, jackpot situation I'm in right now with uh, what appears to be a defective output transformer on the speaker. And I was just saying to myself before turning on the cameras, I can just carry on and I'll just carry on, do the alignment, and uh, we'll just, what I'll do is I'll just take out the two output tubes here. Okay, and then there's no problem with uh, imbalanced uh, operation of one output tube because there's there's no plate on, voltage on the other, etc., etc. And then I thought, well, I'll just take the speaker and put it away somewhere. And, 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 and then I realized I can't operate this set without the field coil plugged in. Hmm. So, and then I started the camera running <laughs> right at that moment. So that's where I am. What am I going to do here? I need this field coil in the radio to get the B plus to go through the radio. You know, if, if, if the case is this is shot, then that certainly appears to be the case. Then if you just cut the wires here and put this plug back in and have the, in effect the same thing, no output transformer connected, no tubes in the output. I think that's what I got to do. As much as I don't like cutting these wires, I'm going to. I don't know what else can I do. So we'll cut them like this. Ow! Oh! I'm still stuck with this big speaker up here on my bench. I thought I could get rid of it. No, can't get rid of it. Oh boy. But the fact is, we can operate the set without the uh, audio output transformer working and all that stuff. And uh, if we do need to hear it, I can tap out the audio and stick it through some other amplifier or something. If we do, do really need to hear it. But actually, for an alignment, all you need to do is watch the AVC voltage. We don't really need to hear, hear the radio. And so, so, so I have aligned the set, but uh, some I had some questions about um, the uh, local oscillator. Is it above or below? Is it is the radio? Is the radio been um, aligned previously correctly? So that's what I'm kind of interested in checking out. Is this really going to work? Can you really do this? That big, beautiful speaker over there. Oh, also, I ended the last video with a happy note. I, I presented another speaker with a output transformer on it, and said, "You know, I got, I got, I got a way out of this." No, I don't. That speaker transformer, the output transformer on that speaker, it's meant for a single-ended amplifier, not a push-pull. So there, there's no, there's no center tap primary on it. So it's down, down the drain. And I don't think I have another transformer anywhere. I just haven't collected that kind of stuff. Darn. <laughs> so anyway, we won't go on about that. That's 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 water currently flowing under the bridge. Is there really any problem with operating this without the output tubes in? Did I, did I actually pull out the correct tubes? <laughs> Yes, and I did change these tubes from the original 6F6 to 6V6s. Is that part of what happened here? Did, did that make that change? And, and another thing is that E-type tube, the 6F6EG tube, with a slightly different uh, wiring internally of its elements, um, was that put in here to compensate for this problem in the output transformer? I can't imagine that. And then, and then I came along and just undid everything and put it into a danger zone, which has ended up costing us the output transformer. Did I do that? I think so, but you know, there's many possibilities here for how things got to be the way they are. I'm sure I'm fully impl implicated in that. So we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be. I'm going to stop for a while now and set up some equipment and get everything working properly. So we get a nice view of a how of the uh, IF transformers using a sweep through the IF frequency, and we'll see what shape what shape it's in. That's that's what I'm aiming to do. We'll, we'll, 
but we'll see if my aim is true. Okay, here we go. So, um, so I have the sweep generator. It's, sweep, whoop, it's sweeping something right now. Oh my gosh, I almost knocked a box of tubes on the floor. Yikes. Boy. Okay, so, so the sweep generator is producing a sweep. The center of it is right around a million, so I, th I think it's, well, I can check, check, check. Don't talk, just check. Starting at 505 and ending at 1628, so it's sweeping most of the AM band. That's not at all what we want. We'll adjust that in a bit. So I have the output of the sweep generator connected to the grid of the 6SA7, which is the uh, mixer tube. And I picked grid 3, which is the signal grid, not the not the oscillator grid. With the I have the, the antenna shorted out. You can see it right here, shorted out as per the instructions. And the result of that is there should be no signal to heterodyne with the local oscillator. No chance of an additional 455 being in the IF while I'm trying to sweep it with, with the sweeper. Um, so I want, I want to sweep them just below 460 actually. Just below 460 to just above. Say we go 20 below and 20 above. 20 kilohertz below and 20 kilohertz above. Let's do that. So. The start frequency then is going to be 440. Just put this like this. Four. You might not be able to read the numbers there. 440. Doesn't have to be precise, but I'm going to make it as. Actually, it's helpful if this is precise. Okay, 440. And then the stop frequency will be 460, 20, 480. Or 80, or 80. Here we are. So it's going to sweep. So right in the middle of the sweep is the 460 center of the IF. Great. There's a sweep output here, which is fed over to the scope, which you can't see at the moment, but you will. You will very soon. In fact, I just swing this camera over here and kind of get a look at it there. A little more comprehensive view of things. Uh, so I think we're all set. Oh, scope, scope connection. I'm going over here for a sec. So what I've done is I've just taken the scope and connected it basically across the volume control outside terminals, where we should we should be able to uh, watch what is essentially the ABC voltage being affected by the uh, sweep. The sweep went there. Here's the other camera view. So you can get a good a good look at the uh, sweep here. Let me just center it a little bit. Okay, so 460 should be dead center. We don't know that for sure. My sweep generator is not. It's it's good. It's really quite quite good, but not precise enough for that. But we can check it later. Are we set? I think so. So I've taken the uh, potentially hot. You can't see what I'm doing. No, you can. So I've taken the potentially hot wires here. O only one of them really is a concern, the center tab one. But I've covered them just to be sure they don't wander their way into something and cause a disaster. So I have the field coil connected. Whole radio should operate, but we are not going to hear a thing out of it. If we hear something. Man alive, am I in big trouble. Okay, here we go. Got your eye on the dim bulbs there. Hmm. I mean, nothing at all, apparently. Uh, well, it's not full voltage, so something's dropping in those light bulbs. So just taking out, I guess, the two output tubes is dropping the heater draw enough. That it's you can't even see it on the uh, on the light bulbs. They're not getting hot enough to be visible. Everything else appears to be okay. I won't hear anything. But we should start seeing stuff on here. Let's get the close up view. I can see stuff already. Okay, so kind of pretend that that's your hearing you're seeing. 
get a little more sensitive. So there's definitely stuff there. I'm going to tune the radio a bit just to see what happens here. Again, the antenna is shorted, so it shouldn't really do anything. And the band we're on, we're on, we're on, we're on the 15. I'm going to put it on the uh, broadcast band here. Okay, that's the broadcast band. I'll tune again just to see what happens. So you know, there's something going on. Right there, there's something. So we, we don't want that. We want to be in a as quiet a spot as we can find. Mm, wow, it's picking up lots of stuff. The sweep is on, eh? Sweep is on, but the output is so low it's not even affecting this. I'm still tuning. It's, just, it's picking up just a ton of noise. If I have to, I can engage a speaker. There are certainly ways of doing it. Okay, we'll accept this as the quiet spot. Change the lighting in here a little bit. Maybe it'll make it a little easier to see. Oh, hey! <laughs> Suddenly, I'm on camera. Um, I'm just going to turn the brightness down on here. This is a tricky business, getting these things to look good on a camera. And also be visible in the eyeball. My eye likes that, but the camera doesn't like that. There we are. That's good enough. Now I'm going to uh, I'm going to stop for a minute and rearrange the video. Okay, so so lots of challenges uh, trying to video a scope image. Right now, the lighting in my shop is low enough that the camera shutter speed has dropped. So when you look at the scope there, it appears to be kind of, you know, jumping around at a certain speed. But when I look at it with my eyes, it looks like it's ten times faster. So I think it's a camera shuttering. But we can't do too much here. So we're ready to go. I'm going to uh, increase the um, uh, sweep level. And we should start seeing something happen here. I'm on my way to running into a problem with all this too. I know it. Here we go. Sweep coming up. You can definitely see something happening on the curve. Um, hmm. So let's check the sweep start and stop points. The start is 440. The finish is 480. The middle is 460. Why? Why is? Why is it this way over here? It should be. We should see something rated right 460. So there is an instruction in this uh, radio that says, "Don't do the alignment unless you got the bottom plate on." But I'm kind of ignoring that. Here's the bottom plate. Two holes in it. Guess what those holes are for? Those holes are for accessing the only two alignment controls um, that uh, are underneath in the chassis, and that's the two uh, IF adjustments. But boy, you think I like sticking a tool through something like this and trying to engage with those little... But uh, what I want to do is I want to experiment with this a little bit and see if this is having any effect. So first I've got to move this connection here. It's kind of sticking right out. So this is the takeoff. This is the input. Uh, there's no real voltage here, so I should get away with just moving this. Hey, how come this came on? This may be the problem here. Oh, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? Wow. I mean, it looks clear, cleaner. So the ground clip had fallen off here from my uh, signal generator. So for a while there, it was kind of working more like a... I don't want to say like a, like a radio station. Let's just say the input signal was low, so other things were visible. Now it's all cleaned up. It's still showing the real ugliness over here. This is this is terrible. Okay, now we're going to experiment with the base plate. Obviously, I'm not going to bolt it right on. I'm just going to lay it up against it and, and see and, and just watch what happens on the scope here. I have to make contact with the chassis. Okay, is there any... <laughs> How to electrocute yourself. Here's a way. 
Okay, making some contact here. Getting right up against it. I don't see the slightest thing happening. I think it's less likely the IFs would be affected by that, and much more likely that the other adjustments would be affected by it. All these coils. There's the coils in here. You know, that they have like a a resting point, if you like. Um, and you put this plate on and the resting point has moved a little bit. I guess we can think of it that way. Worry about that later. Let's worry about that later. What we've got to worry about is the IF appears to be way off. So last time I did this, I fed the IF test signal into the radio just through the antenna. This time I'm right on the grid of the mixer tube. And that shouldn't really make any difference. Being on the antenna and being on the grid are almost the same thing. Isn't it? I would think so. Okay, we're going to undo the short on the antenna. I'm going to take the sweep lead off here and we're going to feed the sweep in from the antenna. If I see something different here, I'm going to kind of freak out. Okay, so obviously we need a little more oomph in here. I'm mean, no longer on the grid. How much oomph can we get? Oomph. Oomph. And oh, look, it's the same shape, same place. So that's definitely not the problem here. Let me reduce the signal again. Go back to the grid. And we get the same shape. Crank this way up. Set it back like that. So it's also, it looks like it's a wavy line here, which, which means the transformers aren't even lined up on target. Did I do some just horrid job of this last time? I guess the answer would have to be yes. How else can you answer that question? Now, this looks a little more like a Frankenstein setup, doesn't it? So we're just going to twiddle the four adjustments on the two transformers until that peak is in the middle of the screen and looks really nice and I'm all happy. We'll see what happens here. First one. So what, what's kind of happened there, I think, is we, we've over, we're we like tuning it up to one frequency. Let me just make this a little less sensitive. And you know, I could extend the sweep so we could see the whole thing, but I really just want to move it. So we're moving it. Okay, so I can move one coil at a time. Oh, look at that. That'll, uh, maybe, is that what was doing it? It's not really moving, it's just making it stronger and weaker. Okay, now I'll get to the top of that one. Top of one. I can do these with my hands, can't I? Over you come. Oh, these are just 16 miles out. Okay, so I can see, you can see the bump of the one I'm moving right here. There it is. It's in the middle now. Okay, I'm going to do the top of the other one because it's just my hands right here. How did I get it that far out? Something's not right here. Something is not right. Okay, so that's two of them on the spot. Go at this one. How did I get it that far out? If you, if you, if you have an answer, you're shouting it at your screen because you knew I booted it up. Here comes this one. These slugs feel better. They were much grindier where they were. And now this this one I started with. Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we're getting an excellent looking result here. Okay, I'm going to turn down the input signal. We'll continue with that. This is really unnerving, in fact. Um, I mean, I did a quick job, but that quick? Wow, look at that. Now, now we're in the right zone. Let me turn on another signal generator here because... I'm going to want to feed another signal in and produce something on the screen here so I can verify where 
460 is. 440, 460, 480. Okay, let's go over them one more time just to make sure they're all in the right spot here. So you, can, you can adjust the uh, squareness of the peak or the, the sharpness of the peak by fooling around with these. And sometimes that's really what you need to do right at the end when you're listening to the, a station on the radio. Turn these a little bit until you get the kind of sound you want because you can have this peak too, too sharp and you're going to sound like a tin can or all trouble. I'm sorry. All bass, no, no, no treble. Okay. Stay there. I mean that. That's. I'm sure that's. That's lovely enough right there. Okay. Now to dump another signal on top. That one. I'm going to try to feed it into the antenna, simply because it's here and it's. probably doing almost exactly the same thing. I'm going to need to hit it with a fair bit of power here. Oh, it's up full. Um, there we go. Frequency counter's not helping me. So we certainly need the frequency counter running properly here. It's all eights. I have purchased a, another uh, frequency counter as a backup to this one. Well, this one finally quits. I'll take a shot at fixing it, but I do have another another frequency counter ready to come in. So we don't know what frequency we're on here. We want to be at 460. This may start up at any time. 460 will be down here. Looks like it's counting, doesn't it? Yeah, I've done too much of this. Uh, it'll come around. Uh, so we can read it down, down, down here. Kilocycles. I gotta, I gotta get right down here just to see it. 460. So this is quite an accurate. 460. Look at that. So what we're seeing on the scope now is the interference pattern. I'm going to move this camera over here. We're seeing the interference pattern from the second signal generator coming in. I'm going to just keep your eye on the scope here. I'm just going to move, uh, move it around. So that's how we can measure the, the actual frequency. I just move this right down here. Usually it's come to life by now. Okay, so the fact is though, the dial is very accurate on that signal generator. Um, everything says this is now 460, but somehow oh, I got it terribly wrong the first time I did it. Whew. Wow. 460, nice shape. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna call that done. Um, Next would be to look at the signal as it comes through the front end of the radio and gets to this point. So I'm going I'm to stop and figure out how the heck can I do that. I can't really do that. Can't can't really do that. Um, but I can I can I can sweep. I, I can sweep the radio frequency through the antenna. And occasionally that frequency is going to mix with the local oscillator, produce 455, and show up. How's that help things? I don't know, but it sounds like fun to do, so I'm going to do that. Okay, I think I got this set now. The sweep is going to stop at uh, 1629. And I'm uh, going to start at. 540, so that's basically the AM band. Here we go. We're sweeping. 
So you see the, uh, the pit there on the screen, that's marking where the radio is tuned. So if I tune the radio, that, that, that spot will move. And look at how big it gets out now. This is kind of interesting in a way. What is going on there? So this is the low this is the low frequency end of the band and this is the higher frequency end. It goes a little higher than my sweep. I'm gonna take my face off there. It's spooky, I see me. Spooky. There, I'm gone. So what what does this mean now? Does this mean that this radio uh, is uh, like very, very weak down here? This is the uh, AVC voltage being developed as the sweep goes through. And there's just much, much, much more AVC way up here. Like tons more. Uh, you know what? Let's put this on the meter and see if that jives. Is there a jiving here? to them. Clipping it onto the same spot that the scope is uh, picking up its signal. It drops it a little bit, eh? Just a little bit, though. Okay, that's on. Now the meter is really hard for you to see, but I can blast it with some light. And if we're lucky, the camera will not adjust enough to make it visible. There we are. So we're going to come down, 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 put it on minus and negative voltage goes up scale, 15 volts, 5 volts. So 5 volts full scale, it's up a little bit. Now, this is a strange thing we're, we're reading here. Because the, the signal causing this voltage is only there for a moment as the sweep goes by. I think it's still valid. So I'm going to tune across. We'll see if this meter goes up and up and up, just like the scope did. Yep. Ooh. So what happened there? You see it's up very high now, and then suddenly it drops off. That's because I went past the range of the uh, sweep. So the radio is no longer hitting the sweep. What's that other thing on the scope now? Somebody else has showed up. This thing, you see, we're picking up signals too because there's a certain amount of antenna action here. So that's an interesting thing. Um, what it means, I don't know. But the fact that that goes bigger and smaller and the AVC voltage like it's really jumping up right at the end here. Let's make this much less sensitive. You barely pick it up here, but by the time you get over here, whoosh, it's really jumping up. <laughs> what did I do when I aligned this thing? Did I do just some horrendous nonsense to it? Okay, let's bring in another piece of equipment here. Um, I think maybe today all I'm going to manage to do is just get everything set up and ready to go. Uh, we're going to bring in another piece of equipment that's going to help us analyze this. Uh, okay, so I haven't done anything. I just came back in my shop and realized, oh my gosh, I've been doing all this on restricted voltage. 108. So, um, I think what I will do is I'm going to tune the radio over here. For what it's worth, I'm going to raise the voltage and we'll see if anything happens to that in terms of its position. Getting bigger doesn't matter. Here we go. Ah, no, nothing happened. Good. <laughs> you would hope radios are designed so that fluctuations in the house voltage do not cause the radio to retune or anything like that. or or it would be disastrous, so not too surprised. Whew. Okay, dodged the small bullet there. Now, uh, what was I going to do? Well, what was I going to do? 
So that's my SDR radio and uh, the antenna lead from the SDR radio is right here. Notice there's a delay. I'm going to hook up just one lead from the SDR radio to the output of this guy here. Oh, okay, look what happened. You see what the ABC meter did. I wasn't looking at the scope. You can see the meter there in the dark. And when I clip this on, yeehaw, she goes right over. Makes you wonder what's coming out of this. Uh, maybe I'm just adding more and more antenna to the radio in a stupid place on the grid of the mixer. Or I do need to put this ground on. So we'll try it with the ground here. I worry about blowing up my SDR radio. Chunkola. Okay, so that knocked it down ultimately. Knocked down the ABC. And what do we got on our SDR now? Okay, so what I want to try to find with this arrangement, and I just realized that I, I've done it wrong. Uh, well, yeah, I've done it wrong, but maybe this will work anyway. We should be able to see the local oscillator. So I tune the radio, something should move on the SDR. The deal is, in fact, you can see it there on the right. And it just popped on. No. Pop out. I'm getting a little bit of screen effects there. Um, I better not say what I'm seeing, because I think what I'm seeing is just germane here. So. There's the local oscillator. And you see it traveling across, loud and clear. And I'm picking this up on the grid, on the grid number three, which is not supposed to have the local oscillator on it, but there she be, clear as a bell. So this is gonna allow us to do a number of checks here. I don't need the sweep generator going. I don't need any of that to do this. Now, now, what's that in the IF there? So, so the IF frequency is 460. Um, I can point with the mouse, I think. Yeah. Can I not? Yes. So 460 is right around here. And if there's enough signal available, I doubt there is the way I have this connected. Um, we, we, we should see action right in here all the time as frequencies that are being tuned across here are being converted to 4, 450 right in here, 460. But there's something else in there. Now, I have to slam the SDR. This is a cheap $25 SDR I'm using, and it has problems, as I have discovered from more and more use of it. It could be that signal down around 400k is, actually doesn't exist. It's tracking perfectly through the... Uh, Some other weird stuff going on there, but I want the real purpose here is just to note the frequency of the local oscillator. So what we'll do now is I'm going to tune the radio so that on the dial it shows that it's on one million. I tune it into a million. So the radio, the radio is at a million. Now we can look at the local oscillator and determine the frequency of the local oscillator. Frequency is written up here. 1480. So you take 1480, subtract 1 million from it, you're left with 480. What happened to the 460? It's supposed to be 460. That shows you, I believe this shows you that the front front dial is inaccurate. So if we do kind of the same thing only the other way around, the local oscillator we will set to 460. Let me mark 460 on the screen first. Okay, so I'll move the local oscillator so it's where the red line is. The radio is really picking up 1 million hertz now. But the dial, a little awkward to do this, the dial is showing just under 900. No, I'm reading that wrong. Oh, it's really, really close. It's really, really close. 
That's a million. It's not that far out, is it? It's not as far out as I thought. So it'd be pretty easy to move the local oscillator. Put this right on a million. Don't even, yeah. So now the local oscillator should be 1 million plus 460. Um, the adjustments for that are all, yeah. You know what, we're not gonna adjust anything. We're gonna discover what the situation is. That's what we're gonna do. So that's the broadcast band. Go to the next band and try to figure out which side the local oscillator is on from the target frequency. And uh, so the next band, I believe the next band is the broadband, six megahertz to 18 megahertz. I'll, I'll put the dial on 10 megahertz. Okay, now, gotta ignore all this now. You shouldn't be seeing anything here. And if anything's happening down at this frequency, it doesn't matter. The radio's not listening down here at all. It's listening up here. That makes sense, what I'm saying. So, we're dialed on 10, so the local oscillator, move this over. So there, there's 10 megahertz, the local oscillator should be at 10,460. Should be right around, right around here. I think this is it here. So I'll wiggle it a bit. Whoa, 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 what else going on there? Remember, where, where am I looking? I'm looking at this in a, in a crazy place. I'm looking at this at the input to the mixer tube. Not even sure why we see the local oscillator, but the really good chance is there's just enough antenna action in the wires here. And the local oscillator is, is radiating out, as most of them do. We're getting a little more than what I bargained for. Interesting that there's something right at 10. I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to put a pickup coil here instead of this connection because I, this connection actually I, I shouldn't have even made it. I just got all excited about using my special danger technique. That's another technique. So, um, I'm going to stop for a minute here. Okay, so what we're going to sniff around now, what we're going to, oh, that's a terrible way. <laughs> what? So I'm going to sniff around with this coil. This is kind of a fancy looking thing. There's nothing fancy about this at all. It's just an audio kind of cable here. And that's just a coil up at this end. Nothing special going on here. This isn't some highfalutin probe or anything like that. This is now the antenna to my SDR. Okay, so my guess is these are the antenna coils. Further guess is that these are the oscillator coils. Notice they put these ones on this angle. They put those ones on that angle. They try to reduce you know, their interference or whatever. And then there's some pretty extensive coils right up in here. And so, so I think maybe these are intermediate coils or something of that sort. And this is more the antenna coils. This is really the ones that we're interested in. So I'm going to just move this all around. Watch what happens now. First of all, let me let me just stand this far away. I'm, I'm a good foot and a half away here and just tune the radio. And you see that thing racing around? That is probably the local oscillator. I'm getting it way out here. Way out here. Those other things that are racing around, as far as I know, are artifacts of the SDR. They move in the opposite direction. They move at twice the rate. They do all kinds of weird things. They, they gather in one place. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what the heck, like what's going on right here. They all gather right, right there. I, I don't know what this is. Don't worry about it. What I'm trying to figure out is, is this local oscillator above or below the target frequency? So I'm going to tune the radio to 10 megahertz on the dial. Local oscillator is at 9.4. Does it make any sense at all? So expect it to be 460 above or below 10. And it would appear to be 600 and something below 10. Below. Below. 
So it's below on this. It's below on this band. Let's let's go to. I can. I should stop this from sweeping you. Kill the output a little bit. I don't want that other uh, signal generator involved. Did anything happen on the screen? I don't think so. Eh? Look at all those other signals in there. What is all that? You got me. One was wiggling there. So the one. Let me see if I can point at it. This one here. This one right here. It's wiggling a bit. Oh, this one's wiggling too. Even they're all wiggling. Actually, you can look at this this this, this bottom bottom line. You can see which ones are moving. I'm, I'm interfering with them. Is there that many os oscillating signals coming out of this radio? That's oh man. <laughs> Far away again. Okay, let's, let's move them with the tuner again. They're all moving. See, one of these is real and all there. Look at the all, they all gather right here. I, 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 it's just, you know, is that because of these radios? Is it because of the super heterodyne? Uh, super heterodyne system producing all kinds of signals, but only the 450, 4, 460 kilohertz one can get through the radio. All the rest, they just do nothing. Is that kind of what's going on here? Am I clarifying anything at this point? <laughs> so I think I think I put the local oscillator at 10 megahertz. That would mean the radio is either going to be tuned to pick up four, like 460 less or 460 more. Okay, let's try it. I'll, I'll send in a signal. This is the sweeper. We don't need this even hooked up. We have just done something though. No. We'll put on the other signal generator here. And we'll just try to find out what what frequency the radio really is tuned to. Um, so all the excitement's kind of over here now. Um, so on the dial it's tuned to a little above 10. 10.5 10, 10 or something. It's a moderate signal going into the antenna. I'm watching the SDR display as we head down towards 10. Hey, the signal counter finally came around, the frequency counter. Down towards 10. We should be on there somewhere. Nobody showed up at all. Okay, more, more juice. Any more juice? I don't see a thing. Am I doing something wrong here? Okay, full juice. That was just maximum ju juicage. Okay, so I, so I, I must have done something wrong here. Uh, let's see. First thing, knock the camera over. That would be a good start. Right there, I stepped on the camera wire. <laughs> Yank the camera. And a lovely shot. And I had to step on the wire. Um, how come we're not seeing anything here? How did this get up to 12? So, definitely connected. Firing a heavy signal into the antenna of the radio. The radio is definitely on 10 megahertz here. Tuned tune to 10. A little hard to see in the camera, but it is. And it's not seeing anything. Is, is this a band that didn't work when I did the <laughs> your alignment? And I line, I line this thing right out. What's going wrong? What is going wrong? Why why can't we see this? Because I'm looking on the scope when I should be looking on the S on the uh, meter here. It's really what I should be looking for. I should be looking at this. I I either one. That one should do it. So I'm just turning the sweep on on the scope because I turned it off the sweep generator. So the scope sweep ended. So now the scope is sweeping internally. 
for what it's worth. Watch that ABC meter here and see if we don't see something. Because we can't hear it. I just got my eye on that. Oh, that would be it. Right there. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was, that's pretty strong. Because I'm hitting the radio with a whopper of a signal. Go back. Let's find it again. There it is. So now the radio is receiving the signal generator I'm adjusting. Let me tune the radio. It should be. No, it's even harder with the radio tuning. So we're, we're, we're there roughly anyway. 10.4 on the signal generator. 10.4 on the signal generator and here, yikes. Well, that's pretty close. So, so, so the radio is tuned to 10.4 roughly. It's receiving 10.4 roughly. So the local oscillator is in the right place. Is, that, is this correct? Is this, is this the correct way of looking at it? I think it is. Unless the pointer on the string is six miles out. So th this tells us now. Here, let me just rearrange this here. That the local oscillator is below the target frequency. Is that, is that right? Did I get it right? Oh, uh, right, local oscillator. The radio's picking up 10.4 right now, and the local oscillator is at where? Where? Is it right on that, all that gibberish there? 10. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if you look, yeah, that's perfect. So we're at basically 10.460, and that's exactly right. We would expect to find the local oscillator at 10. That's good. Okay, so local oscillator below. I got it. <laughs> Next band. Same question. Almost the same frequencies. We're now on the band spread, 31 meter band. I'll tune the radio to something nice. What's something like 9.5. 9.5, if the oscillator's below, the oscillator would be at around 9.1. Somewhere around there. 9.1, okay, it's still on the screen. Where do we see the local? 9.1's 9, 9 not on the screen here. Slide this over. 9.1 is right around. Wow, well, it's right around here. Anybody? Anybody? Oh, well, I got the look. I got the, there it is. Did you see it showing up there at nine. So if it's at nine, the radio should be tuned to 9.460. Oh, just a funny coincidence. Nine. 9.460. So I'm going to tune the signal generator, and we'll see that meter jump at some point. No, no jumping. Okay, so it should be 9.4. Maybe I didn't get down low enough. Hey, there's no jumping. Why? Oh, why no jumping now? Okay, again. Radio's tuned to 9.5 on the dial. Oscillator appears to be right at nine. Uh, if it if the radio is tuned to nine point five, then the upper oscillator, if the oscillator was above, it would be nine point nine point nine. Well, it's still on the screen, so we don't see it. So I'm pretty sure it has to be that one at right at nine, which means we're tuned to nine four sixty, which means. When I dial the signal generator to 9460, we should see it right in here. Oh, there it is. See, I just had the signal down low enough, and maybe, maybe this band is a little weak. So 
So there we are. So once again, local oscillator below target frequency. Local oscillator at 9, radio tuned at 9.5, actual reception coming 9.45, local oscillator below. Okay, next band. So this is the 11 megahertz band. We'll tune it to 11.8. Eight. Okay, that's good. Uh, we need to adjust. We need to look, look over. Look. I don't know. Look this way. We need to adjust the SDR to eleven point eight. So we'll put the red line where the radio is tuned via its dial. Okay, that's no good. We want eleven eight in the middle. Eleven eight. So the red line is where we think the radio is tuned. Oh, this is probably a local oscillator out here already. I just have my uh, my pickup coil just sitting on the bench here. Well, that's close enough, I guess. So if we're tuned to 11.8, we'd expect to look... Wait a minute, it's above on this one. So if we're tuned to 11.8... Sorry, just my thoughts just went off in different directions there. And if we're below, then it would be at 11.4, which is on the screen and we don't see it. If we're at 11.8 and it's above, 11.8 plus 460 is 12 to 260. Oh, that's almost where we are there, isn't it? Now it's above. I gotta write this down because it's just too much for my poor brain to keep track of. Um, so it was below and below on the first two bands. The broadcast band and the other one was the... Oh! The other one was the... Uh, 31 meter band. Below, below. Can't remember now if I did the. Uh, now this next band, this one's above. 25 meter band above. Is it? We still have to do another, another, another check. That is, what is the radio really tuned to? So I'm going to tune around 11.8, and we'll watch for the uh, ABC voltage to go. Okay, 11. Here we are. So Zooming right by it, there it is. Wow! And the frequency is 11.83, so it's very close to 11.8. So that verifies that, in fact, below. No, above, 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 above. Jim, 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 don't make these stupid mistakes. Above, above, above. Yeah, I'll write down notes, I'll write the notes down wrong. Next band we're going to do is a 19 meter band. I'm going to tune the radio to 15.2. 19 meter. 15.2. Okay, we'll take the SDR up there. 15.2. It's roughly in the middle here. Something jumping up and down here. 15.2. Did I not have trouble with this band? Completely, complete trouble with this band? 15.2. We'll take the signal generator up there. Okay, watching the little S, watching the SDR meter. Oh, did I say SDR meter? That's a stupid thing. Right there. Very precise. So that is 15.16 on the dial. We're at 15.2. It's 15.2 and 15.16. That's 400 out. Ah. No, that's 40 out. 440. Yep, been in here too long. 
Where is the local oscillator? Where is the local oscillator? So there's something really strong there showing up below 14, 750. And if I tune the radio, I'm sure we'll see it jump around. It's, well, not exactly jumping, it's moving. Yeah, this is a band spread band, so it's not going to move a lot. If we put this back on 15.2, just so we have some semblance of order here. 15.2. So 15.2, so the local oscillator is below. Mm. Isn't that right? What are we actually tuned to? That's, didn't I do that today? 15.16, 15, the actual thing we're picking up. And the local oscillator is down at 14. So 7.50, yeah, that works out. Local oscillator below. Below everywhere, but the 25 meter band, let's check that again. Meter band, because I think this might be backwards. This might have been aligned backwards if it's different than the rest. Okay, 11.8, just for fun. And jump to the SDR down there. So the red line's on 11.8, where we're tuned. I'm gonna just redo everything here. Where are we actually tuned? Okay, watching the AVC meter, there it is. We're tuned. 12.75, which is Which is a big problem. Uh, I've got it 11.8 on the dial. Did I, how did I miss this? But it popped, oh, this might be the image. It's popping up at, here at 12. Does it pop up also at 11? 8. Okay, going down 11.8. I'll probably see it. Oh, yeah, it's much stronger. So, so we, we, we all, I almost made the mistake I'm trying to correct. <laughs> I'm trying to sort out this guy up. I'm just watching the ABC meter get it fairly accurate. Okay. Okay. You're looking at a wall. 11.8. When the radio is tuned, the dial's 11.8. So the dial's correct. And where's the local oscillator? How, how, did, I, how did I get it? It was below. way up there at 12. Now is that making sense? 12.5. Yeah, I've been in here too long. It's almost lunchtime in fact. Holy smokes. So 12. 5. Help me please. So we had 460 to 11.8. We get 12.2 something and that's where it is. It's above. But if we if we tune if we if we pretend oh that's not right it should be below wow that that's actually you know what that's uh, like it doesn't matter how much you tune the radio wow I don't know if you can move move that local oscillator that far and make it on the other side of the input signal so it matches all the rest why would they have one band above it's not even the top band or the bottom band it's in the middle and all the rest are below. Well, I think I'm going to leave it at this for now. That's enough information to keep me thinking all day. I'm going to try and look for alternatives to the speaker problem in here and the output transformer problem. But I don't think I have any. Um, I just don't think I do. So that's why I'm quite interested in any comments you might make on the previous video to this one. I'm not so interested in what you, might <laughs> what you might say about this one. So we're left with the question. 25 meter band, is it done wrong? Does it need to be done some other way? I think we'll probably start with that tomorrow. So thanks for watching, and uh, it's time for lunch for me.